<sighs> Consider, if you will, a middle-aged man. He lies alone in his own bed in a studio apartment in a rundown building in a city not too far from your own. The contents of this apartment are not important, for the man, we'll call him Rory, is not really there at the moment. His body is, of course. He lays on top of a mass of twisted sheets, sweat pouring down his neck. His heart pounds in his chest, not because of where he is, but because of where he dreams to be. In the dream, it is not twisted sheets that hold him down, but straps of a material that doesn't quite feel like leather. A strap holds his head fast on a steel table and covers his mouth so he cannot scream too loudly. And in the room around him, rather than a bleak studio apartment, is a cold, white cell. A lab so antiseptic that it cannot be of this earth. And when the door opens, and figures tall and gray and impossibly thin enter the room, Rory receives what to him can only be a blessing. He wakes up. <gasps> but he doesn't feel very blessed. Welcome to the world of visitation. So that's the thing. I'm not really sure it was a visitation. I mean, it's possible, right? That you could be having dreams about something that already happened? I mean, it still counts as an abduction experience, doesn't it? Well, remember we talked about this, Myrna. It's important not to try and keep score with experiences. Why not? I mean, it's the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. If, you know, it happened. Yes, but it's important to keep the feelings of others in mind. Not every abduction experience is as positive as yours. I think that's about all for today. Remember, next week's meeting has been moved from Thursday to Wednesday because of a conflict with the room. I know that gives us one less day with our dream journals, but I think the closer deadline will do everyone some good. We could use a little more focus in that area. My dream journal is over a hundred pages now. Yes. That's it. Thank you, everyone. Rory, could I have a word, please? Are you all right? Fine. You were a little quiet tonight, even for you. Have the dreams gotten worse? I, I don't know, maybe. Have you thought any more about what we talked about last time? You mean the shrink? I'm just concerned that a group like this might not meet all of your needs. Look, I told you, last time they put me on so many pills I couldn't even stand up. I mean, this is, this is bad, but it's not as bad as that. All right. But you have my card, right? You can call me if you need anything. I got it, sure. I'm serious, day or night. I know. Look, look, I gotta go. We just all worry about you, Rory. I know a lot of these people that come to the group are not as sincere as you are. <laughs> Posers. Yes. Well, between you and me, it does appear that way. But the group exists to help people process experiences that might be difficult to explain. I'm just trying to say we're here to help you. Yeah. Rory. Yeah. <sighs> Nothing. Just be careful. And Rory turns away. The facilitator of the group watches him, paternal concern etched across his face. But Rory is not aware, nor would he particularly care if he was. Rory is already considering whether or not to give up on this group, just like he's given up on all the others. Abduction Survivors Anonymous, a ridiculous idea in Rory's mind. One he would dismiss out of hand if he himself wasn't an abduction survivor. At least that's what he likes to think happened to him. Still, groups like this break up his day, give him something to do, Something to take up the time before he has to return to his little apartment and lie down on that bed 
once again. Rory Lucas? There, next to the door leading out into the street, stands a woman. He had not noticed her before. If she had not spoken, he probably would have walked right by her. She is neither pretty nor beautiful, but perfectly composed in a light jacket, jeans, and heels. Her auburn hair is pulled back into a ponytail held in place by what appears to be her only ornamentation, a clip with a large green stone at the center. Rory doesn't know why, but he gets the impression that the stone is an actual emerald. Rory Lucas? Do I know you? No, I'm new. Pleased to meet you, new. Now, if you'll excuse me. Do you always use dad jokes on pretty girls? <laughs> no. Could you get out of my way, please? I have somewhere to be. Do you? What? Do you actually have somewhere to be? Because I get the idea you're only saying that to get rid of me. What's your deal? I think we may have gotten off on the wrong foot. Can I buy you a cup of coffee? <sighs> Look, I'm not sure why you're talking to me, but I'm not interested in being interviewed for your psych paper or for your blog. And if you're one of those who thinks being with an abductee is just the last word in excitement, let me dissuade you of that notion. I'm just a regular, boring guy who has bad dreams sometimes. I'm not a tragic soul you can save, and I don't have some weird kink involving probes. If you do, that's, that's fine. That's your business. I don't want to hear about it. And I just want to buy you a cup of coffee. Why? 37 Alpha told me to. Who told you that name? He did. Himself. Or maybe it's a she. Kind of hard to tell with them, you know? Who are you? A friend with some sway with your buddy 37 Alpha. Government? The authorities, let's say. I knew it. I knew they were in contact with the government. What have you been selling this out for? Weapons? Secrets? Keep your voice down. I'll explain it all at a nice coffee shop right around the corner. Are you coming? Of course I'm coming. Well, all right. Cream? Who are you? Or just black. Honestly, it's been a long time since I ordered drip coffee. I don't remember how people take it. Just tell me who you are. Nope. What? No. I will not tell you who I am. There's no reason for you to know. Well, then you can take your coffee and shove it. Good night. Sit down, Rory. Just tell me who you I'm not going to tell you who I am. Because number one, you don't need to know. And number two... You really don't want to know. Like I said, enjoy your coffee. I'm not trying to analyze you. At least not like Mr. Facilitator back there at the Learning Annex. You know he flunked out of med school. Really? Didn't tell you that, did he? What did you think? Someone with a Harvard psych degree would be running a support group for alien abductees? Shh, shh, keep your voice down. So you do care what people think. Look, I live in this neighborhood, okay? I just... People don't need to know stuff about me. Okay. Sit down, and I'll be quiet. And explain that. What did you mean I didn't want to know who you were? Let me tell you what was just about to happen. You were going to tell me to go to hell because I wouldn't tell you my name. Then you were going to march out of here all self-righteous, feeling good about yourself, in control for once. And in about ten minutes, you were going to calm down and start to think about everything that's happened tonight. And then you would realize, I probably held answers to questions that haunt you every time you close your eyes. And you wanted those answers. Badly. Then it would dawn on you that you really didn't care what my name was. You would have come back here, and I would have been waiting for you. And we would have had this conversation just like you'd never left the coffee shop. All I did was save us 15 minutes. It's Lynn. What? My name is Lynn. You'll excuse me if I don't give you the last name right now. Save something for the second date. Okay. Okay? Okay, we can talk. How very generous of you. I propose tit for tat. I ask you one, you ask me one. Fair? And you'll answer? Don't be naive. But if I can't answer one of yours, I'll give you another. 
kind of like a foul ball, but I get to go first. Okay. Good. How often are you having these dreams? I think every night. Some nights I don't remember, but it seems like I had them. Night sweats, twisted sheets? That counts as your second question. Fair enough. Go ahead. How do you know 37 Alpha? As an asset in a security file. I've never met... it. But what little we know about them I've studied. Where did they come from? Uh, uh, uh. uh right. Uh, yes, twisted sheets, cold sweats. Sometimes I don't remember the dreams, but I'm sure I still have them. Now, where did they come from? A ways out. Not so long that light speed is necessary, but long enough. I could show you a chart or name a star, but what good would that do? My turn. What do you remember about the dreams? Everything. Everything? They're vivid. Like something that happened five minutes ago. I remember them like I remember following you into this coffee shop. What happens? Tied to a table. The lights are they are too bright. I can't move my head, so all I see is peripheral vision. There, there are figures moving around, talking in some strange language. They have devices, machines. Now and again I feel pressure against one part of my body or another. My, my temple, my ribcage, just above my heart, one testicle. I, 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 I never quite feel pain. But it's, it's like the pain could start at any moment. What sorts of devices? I, 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 I'm not sure this is right, but I get the idea... It's like a power drill. A drill? I remember seeing a flash out of the corner of my eye once. It was a a drill bit. Tiny, size of a needle. But you say they never actually hurt you. I don't remember pain. I... Just being tied down. And almost suffocating because of the binding over over my mouth. Okay. What else? Forgetting something? (laughs) Touché. Usually people get to talking and forget about the back and forth. Go ahead. Why do you want to talk to me? Maybe you remind me of my father. Is that one you can't answer or one you won't? I choose not to answer because it's a stupid question. And it's not what you want to know. You seem to assume an awful lot about what I do and do not want to know. I've been studying you for a long time. All right. Test time. What should I have just asked you? What was it I really wanted to know, Lynn? You want to know if I'm working for or against them. Well... I work for the authorities on Earth. Now I get one. No, 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 you don't. That last one doesn't count. Why not? Because that wasn't what I was going to ask. You can't ask and answer your own question and have it count toward one of mine. Are you sure you're not a lawyer? Teacher. Was. And if you don't think arguing with high school students prepares you for this... Just ask your damn question. What do you want from me? Knew we'd get there sooner or later. It's simple. We want you to volunteer. But... Volunteer? Volunteer for what? Them. We want you to be... a subject. Voluntarily. What the hell are you talking about? They take me whenever they want. That's your point of view. From the rat's point of view, the scientist can put him in the maze whenever he wants. But the scientist has a different perspective. He does his research a certain way, so it will be reviewed favorably. So he'll get prestige and therefore more cheese. You're just a rat in a maze, Rory. You don't understand the pressures our visitors are under. You mean they can't always take me? Of course not. There are treaties going back decades. Every abduction is reviewed, approved, and scheduled. They could no more abduct you tonight than I could rob this coffee shop and get away with it. So, what's this What's this about? Why approach me? Why, why ask? Yes, this is where things get tricky. You might have noticed things have changed in D.C. I heard something about an election. Everyone is a little nervous about what our new commander-in-chief will do when he learns about our friends. Some think he'll try and negotiate for the movie rights to their story. They do not want to tell their story. They want to be gone as soon as possible, and that means accelerated research. What, What does that mean? For me, I mean. Pretty much the same thing it's involved up to until now. Only without the kumbaya sessions with Dr. Katz back there. Why would I do this? They done God knows what to me without asking, but why would I go to them voluntarily? 50000 a year for the rest of your life. Tax-free. We'll reinstate your driver's license, wipe your record of that little incident in the bar last month. Oh, and you'll be enrolled in the Congressional Health Care Program. 
That's a card that gets you into certain clinics for free. And you'll find their pharmacy is a little more understanding when it comes to prescription refills. Well, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm looking at a gift horse. You know what they say about them, right? Yeah. But in this case, I'm checking every single tooth. Carefully. You alright? It's just, I... I've never seen this room, except from the... Ex- the, the table over there. You'll find everything is a bit more agreeable when you come through the door willingly. I would describe what's going to happen to me as many things, but not agreeable. How long? They'll be here in a minute or two. No, no, I mean how much time will they need? Half an hour, tops. Like I said, our (laughs) friends are on a deadline. Okay. What, What do I do? You mean you don't know? Of course I don't know. I just wake up, I'd already be there on the table. Well, I think you can figure out how to lay on a table. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if you put your hands down by your sides, there's an automatic harness that puts the restraints in place. Restraints? Why? They're going to be doing some pretty delicate stuff. A twitch of your neck when that needle is in your head could paralyze you. (laughs) It's for your own safety, Rory. All right. You all right? Let's just get this over with. Yeah, they're coming. Probably them now. You're going to stay? I'd like to, but I can't. Why not? It's the particular experiment, Rory. The thing they're doing... It's about fear. What? Fear? Yeah. They don't have that neurological response, so it fascinates them. They don't understand how our species could develop to the point of space travel, yet still carry around this leftover emotion from when we lived in the trees. It doesn't make any sense to them, so they study it. Why Why do you have to leave? Why are you leaving? Part of the experiment. You'll be more afraid if you're alone. What? What? Oh, and one more thing. Sorry, but I wasn't entirely honest with you. What would I... I I don't understand. The president has known about these aliens for a long time. Being the smart man he is, he saw it as an incredible licensing opportunity. What the hell are you... Licensing? The visitors need subjects. Companies like mine provide them. We outbid five other firms for the privilege. But But you said you work for the government. No, you said that, Rory. Over and over. I just said I worked for the authorities. Well, well, what about what about the deal? The deal? Here's the deal, Rory. I lied about everything. And there's nothing you can do about it now because you're going to be dead soon. Dead and gone. And with no one left to care because you pushed everyone in your life away so you could be the creepy guy who claimed to be abducted by aliens. No, no, no. You can't do this. You can't do this. Would you like to see the contract, Rory? It's up for review in two months. But I think we'll get renewed. We've done a really, really good job. Job. You can't. What kind of a monster would... You're put damaged it? goods, Rory. You do our planet no good. We're better off without you. And this way, somebody gets some good out of your sad carcass. I, for example, get a nice bonus. <gasps> You're doing this for money? That and sex is why everybody does everything. They're about here. There was one more thing I was supposed to tell you. Help, help me. What I'm going to tell you, Rory, is the truth. The absolute truth. Please, please help me. You know all those other abductions, Rory? All the dreams of being tied to this table. Yeah. Yeah. They were all in your head. This, this will be your first time. Visitation was written and directed by Jeffrey Adams. It featured Caleb Silvers as the doctor, Beth Lothian as the enthusiastic woman. Jeffrey Adams played Rory and the storyteller, and starring Rachel Malasig as Lynn. Sound design and binaural recording by Jeffrey Adams. Some sound effects from the Freesound Project 
at freesound.org. Music by the wonderful Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0.